Hey guys, so we saw kind of the basics about the sampling distribution and also the central limit theorem, kind of how that ties into everything. So let's go ahead and move on to z-scores. So z-scores, um, they basically serve to standardize normal distributions and we use them to find probabilities. And so you standardize by changing all the sample means. So before we dealt with individual observations or individual values, right? So we treated those individual values and made them z-scores. Now we're going to talk about sample means. We're going to have a sample and have this average, um, and with that average converted to a z-score. So remember, z-scores represent how many standard deviations away. A value is away um, is away from the mean. With sampling distribution, they represent the the basically still a measure of spread, right? So it's telling you how far away something is from the midpoint. But in this case, it's the number of standard errors, or I'm going to say SEs. It's a sigma x bar. A sample mean is away from the mean of the sample means. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the variables that are kind of coming into play here. So we still have our z, which is just something minus the mean divided by a measure of spread, right? And that's how we're going to do it every single time. And that's how I'm going to show you guys every single time so that it's very um, routine and becomes something that you guys are just basically understand that it's something minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, standard error in this case. So here we have our x bar, which is a sample mean minus the mean of the sample means divided by the standard error of the sample means. So blank minus the mean divided by the measure of spread. Um, and then we have here kind of the breakdown of the two variables that we haven't really seen before. Um, so the mean of the sample means, in this case, it's still just the population mean of any individual observations because we're basically saying the mean for any observations is three. The mean of samples of 30 people is still just going to be 3 because it's basically like saying the midpoint of the midpoint so that doesn't change so our mean of our sample means is still just the mean that we're used to before um, but the standard error changes a little bit so the standard error is the standard deviation of the individual observations divided by the square root of the sample size so kind of have a, uh, again a breakdown of our variables right here so the ones we haven't seen before so n is something that we've seen before we know that's already sample size it's not really necessary to put it so once the standard deviation is converted to the standard error for the means, the process to get a probability is the same as before. So first things first, you have to shade the area of interest, right? Calculate a z-score for each individual sample mean now, right? Find the probability associated with the z-score. And then decide if that probability corresponds to the shaded area. And if not, work your way to find the answer, right? Um, so McDonald's is coming out with a new line of sandwiches and claims that the average calorie count for the sandwich is 500 with a standard deviation of 216. What is the probability that a randomly selected sandwich has a calorie count of more than 600 calories? All right. So let's get our midpoint. So they said the average was 500. That's still the same average that we're dealing with when we're talking about a sampling distribution for the mean. So we're good for that. And again, these are a bunch of sample means. And these are z-scores associated with those sample means, right? So what would 500 get in terms of z? You get 0, right? Because it's the midpoint. So it's not above or below any standard errors. Now, we have a standard deviation, but we're working with means, right? So let's go ahead and change that. And we say it's a standard deviation divided by a square root of n. So the standard deviation they told us was 216 divided by the square root of, ah, what's our sample size in this case? Our sample size is actually one because they told you a, a randomly selected sandwich. So we're actually dealing with not sample means, but just the standard deviation and individual observations, right? Because we're not talking about a sample of any particular size. So either way, even if you did this problem and you weren't really sure, like, oh, I can't tell if it's sampling or not. Even if you did the standard error, you'd still get the same. The standard error would still be the, sta the standard deviation. So they're both exactly the same. 
But again, this is for a sample size of greater than one. So if we're dealing with a, literally a sample, then you work with that. But here we're just doing standard deviation and mean, right? So it doesn't really change. Um, so let's go ahead and do this problem just like we did before. So 600, we're saying it's greater than 600, right? So let's get a z-score tied to that six, um, value of 600. So 600 minus 500. And again, we're doing, this is again for just individual observations. So x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So we get 600 minus 500 over 216, right? So that gives us a z-score of 0.46. So what do we do next? Find the probability associated with that z-score, right? So let's go ahead and look up 0.46 on our z-chart. So we get 0 0.4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 1772. Again, that's just 0 0.4 and go across to 6. So 1772. So that area corresponds to from zero to the z-score that I was interested in, right? 1772 for a z-score of 0.46. Awesome, but is that our final answer? No, right? So we have to get the probability that x is greater than 600 is, and so if we have from zero to z, we're trying to get the little tail end, all we do is 0.5 minus that area. This should kind of be a review. It shouldn't be anything new. So 0.5 minus 1772 leaves us with 0.3228. There's about a 32% chance that you get a random sandwich that has 600 calories or more. Now, let's move on to number two. So instead of randomly selecting one sandwich, what's the probability of, ran of selecting a random sample of 36 sandwiches and them having an average calorie count of more than 600? So our midpoint is still 500 because we're talking about the same sandwiches, right? We have a standard deviation of 216, but this time we're working with a sample. So let's get our standard error. So it's 216 over the square root of our sample size, which was 36 sandwiches. So 216 over square root of 36, we get 36. So that's our new measure of spread, right? We have a mean of 500, our measure of spread is 36. So now let's find the average calorie, I mean uh, the probability of having an average calorie count of greater than 600. So again, before we're just dealing with individual observations. Here we're dealing with means, right? So averages of these um, samples and z score. So what does 500 get? Still just get zero. But now the z-score for 600, we have the sample mean of 600 minus the population mean divided by the standard error. So that gives us 600 minus 500, all divided by 36. Does that make sense? So 100 divided by 36, that's 2.78. So what do we do now? Same step as before, and I'm sorry, I didn't highlight this. So we got to shade, remember to shade, remember to shade. So we're looking for 600 and up, right? So let's go down to 2.78 and see what we find. So 2.70, So 2.78, we get 49.73. So let's go back up to our problem. And now what does that area correspond to? The area corresponds to the area between 500 and 600, right? So 47, I'm sorry, 49.73. I'm getting the last one and this one mixed up. So 4973, that's the area from 500 to 600, right? And those are averages again. But are we looking for that? No, right? We're looking for the area outside of that, to the right of that. So the probability that x bar is greater than 600 
is 0.5 minus that probability, 49.73. So we're left with 0 0.0027. So it's kind of weird. There's the same sandwich, right? We're looking for 600 or more, but in the above one we get 32%. Here we get 0 0.0027. And the reason for that is because think of you randomly selecting a sandwich. That sandwich could pretty much be not anything, but it's kind of it could be more variable than me picking 36 sandwiches and them having an average of 600 or more. Does that make sense? So if I pick one random sandwich, yeah, that one random sandwich could have a calorie count of 600. But if I get a, uh, a sample of these sandwiches, basically what happens is that that 600 sandwich could be balanced out by one that's in that mix that has 400, right? And so they all kind of balance out so you still get an average of around 500. Does that make sense? So the probability of you finding 600 or more as the average for the 36 sandwiches is very unlikely. Does that make sense? And again, picking one random sandwich, it's cool to get 600. That's fine. That's, you know, that's reasonable. Maybe you just put a little extra mayo. But getting an average of 36, that means they had to have put extra mayo in 36 sandwiches for us to get 600 or more. Does that make sense? And that doesn't really happen. Sometimes there's a little more, sometimes there's a little less, and they kind of all balance off. So you get really, really close. And that's why the measure of spread, that standard error, gets smaller and smaller as the sample size gets bigger and bigger. Does that make sense? So basically for a large sample, you should be right, at, right around the mean. For As you get smaller and smaller samples, there's more and more variability. It's not as kind of centered around that mean as much. So that's about it for sampling distributions for the mean. So let's go ahead and do some practice problems and we'll move on to confidence intervals.